All right, guys, so this is gonna be kind of a different video than I'm used to making. Um, I've been having some uh, topics pop into my mind about knives and the way I buy knives and where my uh, knife collecting is going. Um, and just a lot of different things. Um, and I, I thought about all these different topics while I was at work and I actually made myself a list of uh, things here so I can stay on track. Um, I'm even going to take a, a page out of Richter's book. Um, he's always drinking that Dr. Pepper, calls it the Lord's drink. Well, I think the Lord's drink is sweet tea. And I'm pretty sure he drinks out of a wide mouth mason jar. Just kidding you, buddy. Um, but yeah, I'm a sweet tea fanatic. I always have my sweet tea in the evenings. And um, so I got me a glass of sweet tea. I've got the light turned down kind of low. I've even got a candle lit over here out of the way. Um, it's a tobacco leaf candle. It smells awesome. Um, I kind of put some flashy knives out here. And I'm going to title this video something like Case Knife Collection. Um, and maybe I'll throw something in there about thoughts on, on uh, the knife uh, collecting hobby or something to that effect. And um, I'm not actually showing you my entire case knife collection i just picked out some flashy ones here because it may seem a little clickbaity uh for a title but as a youtuber and someone who's trying to get to that thousand mark i can definitely tell that when i use a generic title for a video it gets a lot more views um my trapper knife collection video and my thoughts on the quote unquote useless spay blade that video's got like almost 20,000 views. And the only reason I can figure is because it's titled Case Trapper, and those are so popular. Um, and people search those, you're gonna, you're gonna get searches for Case Trapper a lot more than you're gonna get searches for Case Large Saddle Horn. That's just the way it is. So I'm hoping that this video garners a lot of views. Um, but, Besides that, I'm not gonna have, it's not gonna be completely a clickbait title because I am gonna show y'all some of my case collection, um, case knives in general, and I'm gonna talk about some topics here. Um, so a little bit about me, um, you know, I've got four kids and I work six or seven days a week. Um, I've got my own place, uh, I've grown a big garden, I've got four kids, I'm pretty busy. Um, there aren't too many afternoons or evenings that I get to sit down and do videos. So usually when I get a chance, I catch myself trying to hurry through them because um, I'm just gonna start kind of showing some of these so that the viewing isn't too boring. Um, when I have a minute to do videos, I catch myself wanting to um, record several you know in that amount of time rather than maybe just dedicate the time i have to one you know one really good video um i'm shooting my videos off of a cell phone uh we had a laptop and some stuff like that but they've all gotten outdated and we haven't replaced them because my wife has an ipad and we just we just don't really haven't had a need for a, a new laptop and i don't use a fancy camera um so I'm using my phone. It's an iPhone. It's not even a, a up-to-date phone. You know, it's got some years on it. Um, I've always told myself that when I started making a little money, if I ever start making a little money on this, that's when I'll start to really invest. But for now, my priorities are keeping the cars running right, uh, keeping the lawn equipment running right, keeping the house in good shape, um, taking care of the yard in the summertime, you know, splitting firewood in the winter time. There's just a lot in my life besides sitting down every day, you know, at lunchtime or whatever and uh, shooting a video. I, I just got too much going on. But I've had all these thoughts about different topics among knives. And um, so I'm going to try to get to some of that. Um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to show y'all the patina that this Richter uh, Knives Ghost Leather Slip is getting. Uh, you can literally tell there's a copper lock in there. 
you can see the shape you can even see the little kicker right there of the copperhead uh, bolster but it's like that on both sides this thing is just absolutely buttery slick i mean it's it might look kind of ragged but i think that's kind of the charm of it but um i'm gonna lead into my next topic with this slip here because what is inside here is a very very special knife um if y'all look right here i've got this copper lock it's from 1998 it's in this marvelous green it's got a little bit of burnt edges going on with it if you can kind of see that um it's just a glorious color i just really thought that green was stunning they call this lizard skin um now it seems like they're not always called lizard skin sometimes they call them burnt green but i've seen them called lizard skin more than once and in 1998 they also came out with a yellow knife with a burnt edge it's called snake skin and then they have an orange one obviously with the burnt edges and they call that pig skin so those were you know being a copper lock enthusiast that i am those were three knives i really wanted I wanted those knives, they're all from 1998, and they are kind of a, you know, kind of a trio. So, a dear friend uh, on, on YouTube and Instagram, Randy Garvin, um, he saw my last Copper Lock video, and he commented, he said, hey, you know, love the video, I've got a, a large Copper Lock on the way uh, as well. And, uh... So I hopped on Instagram and I said, yo, Randy, I said, uh, which, uh, which copper lock did you get? You know, what color? And he shows me a snake skin yellow copper lock. And I was like, oh man, Randy. I said, I know that knife. I had that on my watch list, you know? And I wasn't actually interested in buying the knife because I had just uh, bought this one here for Father's Day. But I had it on my watch list just because sometimes I like to see how much they go for and that sort of thing. And um, and Randy wound up with that knife, which I thought was really cool. And uh, we chit-chatted about the knife for a few minutes. And I told him, I said, that's great. I said, uh, he, he actually didn't know the color because somebody peeled the sticker off of the, the original box. And the seller didn't know the color. The color wasn't on the box. And so all he knew was it was a yellow knife. But I... I was telling him about how that's a snake skin color and how it went along with the lizard skin and the pig skin and all that. And I told him, I said, um, if you ever decide to, you know, sell that knife or if you ever want to do some trading, I said, um, hit me up, you know, cause I, I'm always on the lookout for one of those. And he said, it's in the mailbox. It's on its way to you. And I said, no way, Randy. I said, there's no way. You cannot do that. I said, you just got that knife. I said, I can't take that knife. I said, there's no way. And he said, man, he said, don't, uh, he said, don't worry about a blessing. And, uh, and I said, Randy, I said, man, I said, I don't even know what to say. I said, but I, I just, I, I said, I can't in good faith take that knife off your hands for nothing. I said, at least let me, you know, send you a knife. Let's let's trade. I said, if, if you want me to have that yellow knife, I said, let me send you one that I think you'll like. And he didn't want it. You know, he, he just kept telling me, ah, just send me your address. Just send me your address. Um, but anyway, I knew in my heart that I would be sending Randy a knife as a trade for this piece right here. And guys, I just, two days later, I'm talking about, Two days later, this bad boy came, and it is absolutely stunning. I think I've got too much going on down here. I'm not getting real good focus, but this bad boy is absolutely epic. Look at the color. The uh, camera seems to be picking it up a little more pale yellow. And it actually looked like that on the eBay listing too, but it, it's a little more gold um, or a little darker yellow, I should say. But this thing is just absolutely amazing. I, I just, I was speechless. I was for, for two days. I didn't even know what to say. Of course, I told Randy how grateful I was. Um, but as, as far as, you know, what do you say? I just, 
I just didn't even have words. But um, you can see here um, that the bones on these are, are fairly similar other than the color. The jigging's the same. And the um, they both got the little burnt, uh, you know, tips. And uh, you'll see they have the same shield. And the uh, pigskin one's the same way. Obviously, it's orange, but it's the same way. So this is just really cool. I have um, carried this knife with me in the Richter slip, which I had him make this for Copper Lock because I've got a pretty good collection. And um, I find myself leaving my Copper Locks at home because most of them are so nice. I don't want to get them messed up. And I thought, boy, if I had a uh, if I had a nice slip. I'd be able to carry these things and I have I have carried this yellow knife every day mostly just to admire it you know uh, mostly to admire because oh I would just die if anything happened to this thing but yeah Randy I've told you already over messages and stuff and I've got your knife on the way buddy um, thought it would be there today but it didn't make it I think it got hung up somewhere oh what am I doing let's leave this bad boy out um, but yeah, this was just the most generous thing that anybody's ever done for me on uh, in the knife community. I knew the knife community was amazing, but this was the first time that someone actually reached out to me personally and gave me such an awesome gift. And um, Randy, buddy, you're a class act. Um, I love your content. I love your attitude. I love your old school way of thinking. And uh, you and your wife both just seem like really great people. So thanks for that randy you just you just made my whole year with that knife right there so now i'll be looking for the pig skin and try to get the uh the trifecta going but with that out of the way let's talk about this bad boy right here this was the knife i purchased as a father's day gift and that's just kind of how me and my wife and my family work um she would rather me buy something that she knew I would be happy with rather than take the chance of her buying me something uh, and surprising me with it. So I found this bad boy. This is the uh, Crimson. I'm sorry. I apologize. This is the Cranberry Bone. Um, the Cranberry Bones all came with the uh, Script Shield. And I've got a Stockman right here to match it up to. You can see the Stockman is just a little bit, um, it's 75 Stockman by the way, but it's just a little bit darker. I really like this Stockman. Um, I like both of these knives and I'll tell you why. Some of these cranberry bones, you can get a copper lock in this same color, but the ones I've seen are so faded on the ends that they just look almost just a real pale, ugly, vomit looking pink. And I just, some of them I'm just not a fan of whatsoever but i found this one here this one here has really good blade action it's got good strong back springs and uh this one actually came in a 10 i don't have it out here because it takes up so much room but this one came in a 10 free shipping it was just a really good deal I think I give 60 bucks for this, like I said, free shipping, and it came in a big case tin, which one day I'll do a, a video of this knife all on its own, and I'll show you all that tin. But this thing is put together beautifully. Just no gaps whatsoever. The blade centering is not that great. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not that great. The clip point pretty much touches this liner right here. And I know for some people that's a deal breaker, um, but, I'm not going to carry this beautiful knife every day and use it. So just to have it to admire, maybe carry to church or to a date or whatever, it's totally fine for that. It functions perfectly. The blades aren't getting hung up anywhere. So it's, it's perfectly fine for me. I'm not that picky. We'll get uh, talking about some case fit and finish uh, thoughts here in a minute too. So that was my Father's Day knife I received, you know, a couple weeks ago. Um, now, another thought that I've been having that I wanted to share with y'all is um, how I buy my knives. And it's kind of interesting because just today, Jersey Knife Guy, shout out to Pete, um, he did a video talking about um, how do you buy knives and do you sometimes just let your heart make a decision for whether you buy a knife or not. And uh, this is something I've been wanting to talk about because Big J and some other guys that I actually talk to pretty regular 
and uh, we discussed the knives we buy and we discussed, you know, whether we got, you know, what we, what kind of deal we got and stuff like that. And I've told him before, and this is what I want to share with everyone. I have never been the guy that said, you know what? I want to find a K Stockman. I'm going to get on eBay and I'm going to go find me a K Stockman. I've never been that guy. Hang on a second, fellas. I have always, excuse me, I have always bought my knives by getting on eBay, which 90% of my knives came from eBay. Um, let's see. All of these except for this one came from eBay. So, um, I will get on eBay and I will put search in case knife. And my reason for that is this, and, and this is where it's going to get kind of funny. Um, two years ago, when I was really hunting for knives, trying to build my collection, I might have not wanted to leave all my secrets on the table, but my collection is big enough. These are This is a small little number. These are just some flashy scripts. This is a very small number of the, of the case knife collection that I have, but... I will get on there and I will use a general search like case knife or maybe if I'm in the mood for a trapper I might put in case trapper but I'm, I'm using a very vague general term because what you're trying to do here as far as getting a good deal on these things you want to find that seller that doesn't know a whole lot about the knife itself okay um, I'm gonna look for one here okay right here this is a Buffalo Horn Seahorse Whittler. And this is a beauty of a knife. But right here, if I can get it to focus, BH355WH. This is a Buffalo Horn Whittler. Okay. I bought this on eBay for $40. The listing said black case knife this seahorse whittler is absolutely fantastic sorry i bumped the phone i'm my battery's run a little low so i may have to make this a two-part series but i will uh, talk about this for a second this knife is fantastic buffalo horn seahorse whittler i've never even seen many of these in buffalo horn I got this knife for $40 because the seller didn't have a clue what this knife was. The fact that it's a Seahorse Whittler means that it should have cost more than $40. But being a Buffalo Horn, this is easily a $125 knife. So there's that. I bought a Trapper similar to this, um, Buffalo Horn Trapper, similar situation. Found it at the flea market. It was... It wasn't under the case with all the nicer knives. It was in a cardboard box. I picked it up. I said, hey, how much you want for this one? Because all of his nicer ones, he was spot on with his aftermarket prices. He really didn't have a good deal on much of anything that day. Everything was, was right at market value or secondary market. I picked up that buffalo horn knife out of a box. I knew it was buffalo horn because I could tell by the jigging pattern. I picked that thing up. I said, hey, how much for this one? He said, I, oh, he actually opened the blade up. I thought he was going to show me that it was a buffalo horn knife and, and give me some astronomical number. But he opened the blade up and he shut it and he handed it back to me. And he said, I'll, I'll do 40 on that one. So I've got a, a buffalo horn trapper as well, $40, because they just didn't know what they had. Um, so, yeah, I use general kind of vague searches. And sometimes if I'm really looking for a deal... I'll go to the price now. This works if you're uh, if you're doing buy it now, which is how I normally buy. I don't I don't always fool with auctions, cause a lot of times auctions will they'll come and go before you realize it, and you'll lose a knife, you know, miss out on a knife you might have been really wanting to buy, and it's a bummer and and all that. But I usually go buy it now, and I usually set my price to like fifty bucks. This knife right here, I got this bad boy, golden rod. 2012 only. I got this bad boy right here for $35. 
I search case trapper. I put a maximum price of 40 bucks in. Scrolling, 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 bam, came across this guy. 35 bucks. Fastest purchase I've ever made. These right here, this is uh this will steer off of uh the eBay train for a second. I got this at the flea market. Absolutely beautiful script shield large saddle horn. This is a big boy. Uh, half stops on the large saddle horn. These things run anywhere from $150 to $200 on eBay, sometimes more. Um, this one's a little scratched up. I could probably polish that out. I just haven't yet. This thing is beautiful. It's fit and finish is superb. Half stops are great. Blade action's great. Mammoth size spay blade, like a peanut butter spreader or a cotton sampler. I got this at the flea market for $65. These things are incredibly expensive on eBay. Um, I'm gonna have to get off of here. I, I hate that my battery wasn't more charged, but I kind of had to make this video like a lot of my other videos. I had a few minutes and I wanted to do this. We're gonna come back though with a, with a, a sequel to this, a part two. And I'm gonna talk about why I like case knives, why a case is my preferred brand. We might talk about a few other popular brands. Um, I'm also gonna talk about blade rub because that gets brought up a lot and I've got an interesting thought on that. Um, yeah, so y'all stay tuned. I'll try to get that video out within the next week. I just don't want this one to um, mess up with my battery dies, but yeah. That was my tip for buying case knives. And uh, the next video I'll try to get to the point and we'll talk about, like I said, why I prefer case. Um, and we'll talk about more expensive knives. We'll talk about more budget knives and how case kind of lands right in the middle. And yeah, so anyway, shout out to Georgia Adventure. Amazing gift he sent me. Shout out to Richter Knives. Um, he made the killer slip right here. We did a trade for this. I didn't want to tell everybody because I didn't want everybody and their brother sending Richter their frost knives and wanting a nice slip made, but I, I uh, traded him a nice knife and he made me this slip. I feel like we were both happy with that deal and we've been friends for a long time, so I wanted to have a piece of his work. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs, guys, and I'm, I'm not that close. I'm at like, we'll say close to 850, but yeah, if y'all see this video and you like it, please subscribe. I'm gonna throw some shotgun stuff in there every once in a while, but the majority of my content is gonna be pocket knives because they're just easy to do videos on and they're cheaper to buy. So stay tuned for case knife stuff. If you do like firearm videos, you will like that too. And uh, I'm gonna catch y'all around on the next one. Uh, shout out to Boston Blade Reviews and Big J's Knives as well because they're just two great friends of mine that I've met on the community and um anyway i'll try to link a bunch of guys down there in the uh in the description oh before i forget i want to shout out bc knives he's a young guy he's got a new channel but man he's got some nice pieces and he shouted me out in one of his early videos or a couple of his early videos because i think he was able to take some inspiration from some of my knives in my videos but man for a young fella he's got a killer collection so y'all go check out bc knives as well i know i'm forgetting a bunch of y'all but you know who you are you're all great and i will see y'all on the next one